Welcome to Master Math. Here's a couple of tips that will help you get the most out of this lesson. First of all, you can watch it three, four, five times if you need. Secondly, if you go through a section and don't understand what we're talking about, hit your back button and review that section again. Next, when you come to a You Try It slide, hit your pause button, pull out some paper and pencil, do the problem yourself, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. Well, I hope you learn a little bit of math today and have a good time. We're going to be talking about statistics again today, and scatter plots in particular. And you remember, statistics are just a way to help you summarize data so that you can understand it better and that you can communicate that understanding to other people better. And we're going to discover that there's several different kinds of correlations that statistics may demonstrate. A positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no correlation at all. Well, let's dive right into an example and see if that can help us understand how a scatter plot might be used. In this chart, we're showing different levels of high school or different levels of education achieved and the corresponding work-life earnings that that individual could expect. For instance, an individual that, had, that was not a high school graduate could expect lifetime earnings of $767,000. But someone with a bachelor's degree could expect lifetime earnings of $1.838 million. And somebody with a professional degree, like a law degree, could expect lifetime earnings of over $4 million. Well, I wonder if we could understand this better if we created a scatter plot and plotted the amount of education on one axis and the earnings that you'd expect to receive from that education on the other axis. Let's take a look. This is a scatter graph. And we call it a scatter graph because we scatter the data points onto the graph and just mark the points where there's a correspondence between the x-axis and the y-axis. For instance, for people who did not earn a high school degree, their average earnings were about $766,000. So we create a point that corresponds to where those two uh, x-axis and y-axis numbers meet. And we do the same for high school graduates and college graduates. And we end up with a series of points that are scattered along the graph. Now, we may be able to see some relationship between the variable that's on our x-axis and the variable that's on our y-axis. In this case, it seems to me that as the amount of education increases, the amount of income you'd anticipate over your lifetime increases. This line is going up from the bottom left to the upper right. If we were to try to fit a line onto there, and you try to find a best fitting line, a line that as close as possible shows the trend in those data points. If we were trying to fit a line on there, it would look just like that. And what we have is a positive correlation. It's a positive correlation because as the X value increases, the Y value increases. As the X value decreases, the Y value decreases. Now it's important to understand that just because you have a correlation, a positive correlation or a negative correlation, that doesn't mean that there's a cause and effect relationship in this case, there probably is a cause and effect relationship. If you get more education, you can expect to earn 
more income. So I think it can be said that the amount of education you earn will cause you to earn more income. You can't say it the other way, though. Earning more income will probably not cause you to get greater education. So there is a cause and effect relationship there, but it's important to understand that not both, both variables don't necessarily cause the other. And in some cases, there is no cause and effect relationship, even if there's a positive or a negative correlation between the variables. For instance, the temperatures on the Earth have been increasing pretty regularly for the last 300 years. The number of pirates that can be found on the Earth has decreased over the last couple of hundred years. There is a correlation there, but I think you'd be hard-pressed to demonstrate that there's a cause and effect relationship. I don't think you could say that the temperatures going up have caused the number of pirates to go down or that the decreases, the decrease in the number of pirates has caused global warming. Well, let's look at another data set and we'll create a scatter plot for this too. This data set's showing the relationship between the speed that you travel and the miles per gallon you get in your car. It says that at 30 miles per hour, you get 39.7 miles per gallon. At 65 miles per hour, you get only 30.1 miles per gallon. As our miles per hour went up, our miles per gallon went down. That's a negative correlation. If one variable goes up and the other variable goes down in a, in a predictable fashion, then we have a negative correlation. And we can create a scatter plot for this data. I put miles per gallon on the y-axis and miles per hour on the x-axis. And the previous chart said that at 30 miles per hour we got close to 40 miles per gallon of gas. And at 30, excuse me, at 35 miles per hour we got something like 38 miles per gallon. And when we got up to 65 miles per hour our miles per gallon had gone down to 30. Now that seems like a pretty straight relationship. It seems to me like there is a relationship between the speed that you drive and the miles per gallon that you get in fuel efficiency. And we could draw a line that demonstrated uh, a best fit for these data points and it looks something like that. And you can see it's a negative correlation because as our miles per hour increases, our miles per gallon decrease. Now having drawn a line on this scatter plot, could I create a formula that, that described that line that could help me figure out, for instance, what kind of mileage I would get at 25 uh, miles per hour? Yeah, we could. It'd be real simple. All we have to do is find the slope, the rise over the run, and we need to find our y-intercept, which is about 45 or 42 and a half, and then we cre could create a, a, an equation in slope-intercept form. y equals the slope times x plus the y-intercept. Of course, sometimes there's no correlation between the two variables that we're looking at. Sometimes there's no relationship with them. For instance, Carol's Cookies is a cookie store, and she wanted to find out if her cookie sales varied as the temperature went up. So, on days when the high temperature was 30, she found out that her average cookie sales were $150. And on days when the high temperature was 40, her average cookie sales, cookie sales were $225. And she did that for every temperature between 30 and 90. Do you see a relationship there? Well, I don't think I do, 
But I can promise you it'll be easier to understand if there's a relationship if we create a scatter graph. So that's what I did. I graphed on the x-axis the temperatures and on the y-axis I graphed the average sales. On days when the high temperature was 30 her sales were 150. On days when the average temperature was 40 or the high temperature was 40 her average sales were $230. Now can I find a line that will run through these data points? I, I don't think so. I think if I did it would be, have to be like a straight line that ran left to right because there's no simple line. That line goes all over the place. And there is no correlation between the temperature in degrees and the average cookie sales. Draw a scatter graph of this data and then try to figure out if this correlation, if there is a correlation and what kind of correlation it is. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and when you've finished, hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Okay, we're supposed to create a scatter graph for this data. And this data relates the year to when the population hit certain landmarks. 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion, 4 billion, 5 billion. In 1999, the world population hit 6 billion people. In 2012, it'll hit 7 billion people. Now, if we're going to create a scatter graph, we're going to have to put this data on one axis and this data on the other axis. And it really doesn't matter typically whether you put the, the one data set on the X and the other on Y or reverse that. You can do it either way. I put the population in billions on the Y axis and I put the year on the X axis. And my points scattered out like that. And I think I can draw a line that expresses these points. So I think there is a correlation. And that correlation, I believe, is a positive correlation. As the years increased, the population of the Earth, Earth increased. And that makes some sense, because the population of the Earth has been growing steadily for a long, long time. Well, this is a little bit different scatter plot because we've got two different types of data on here. We've got the average weight of males and the average weight of females by age and weight. And we want to find out if for, for males, for instance, as their age increases, does their weight increase? And we want to find out for females, as their age increases, does their weight increase? And we can see something else in this too. We can maybe see if there's a different pattern or a different correlation for male or female people. And I think that, that number one, there is a relationship for both males and females. As the age increases, the weight increases. It tends to level off when you get close to 20. I think you can see this leveling off. But both of them are increasing as time goes by, as age increases. There's another interesting thing we can see here. We can see that the blue triangles, which represent the average weight of females, are above the green diamonds, which represent the male weight, at 14 and again at 15. But by 16, the average male weighs more than the average female. And by 17, that difference is increased. And by 20, the average male weighs quite a bit more than the average female. So this, this graph really shows us quite a bit.
Well, in this survey, we found out how much TV, on average, a group of students watched per week. And then we got their test scores on a couple of tests. And then we averaged those test scores. Now, to understand if there's a correlation or a relationship between the amount of TV you watch and your average score on tests, it might be helpful to create a scatter plot, which is what we've done. I've put the average TV hours per week on the x-axis and the average test scores on the y-axis. And then I've plotted for each student that average TV hours per week and their average on the scores. So, student one had 30 TV hours and he had an average of 65. Student three also averaged 30 hours, but he averaged 70. So I've got, for 30 hours, I've got two points on my scatter plot. Now, is there a relationship between the average TV hours per week and the average test grade? Well, if you think you can draw a line that kind of accurately runs through those data points, and there are no data points, or there, at least there aren't a lot of data points that are way, way removed from that line, then there is a relationship. And in this case, it tends to be a negative relationship. It runs from the upper left to the lower right. As the average TV hours increase, the average test score decreases. Well, that's our lesson on scatter plots. I hope you understand this a little bit better now. Let's test that understanding. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on scatter plots. Then go back and try the quiz on scatter plots. And be sure you come back to Mastermath again real soon.